Hello everyone, Linda Israel here, and I have a little project. I want a special bag to carry around a journal and a few journaling supplies. So here is my journal that I haven't bound yet, but it's going to be a journal I'll use. And then this is one of those pencil cases so that you would snap into a notebook or something like that, that has pencils and some essential tools in it. And my idea was, is I had this batik fabric and I've got a scrap of canvas here that I would have this in the middle. We're going to have some pockets inside and then this is going to fold up. This will fold over and then Sophia, I believe her name is, she's called uh, Dust Fairy. I'll get her link down below. I've got some sorry silk and embroidered elements from her and i thought that would be pretty across the front here so i'm just planning this out with y'all i haven't made a prototype so this is just going to kind of come together as it comes together i wanted to have a handle that attaches down here comes up and loops over that you would carry it from here so that would keep it closed and I also want the ends closed so that if I put stuff in there it's a true bag so I'll just be able to reach in and then pull my items out and then I can put them back in when I'm done with them so I'm telling you all this because I haven't really measured other than I took some fabric that I already had and I cut them to be the same size so let me measure that for you you. And basically I used a fat quarter of a sorry of a uh, batik that I have here. So let me measure this. So it's about 18, maybe, maybe 18 and a half inches. I'm using a standard eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper folded in half for my journal. And then I had this bag. So I just wanted enough room to hold both. So 18 and a half long and then 14 14 ish I think it's right around 14 inches wide and then for my pockets on the inside this is what was left over from my fat quarter and I just cut it to be the same width because I hope to catch it in the seams on the side and what I need to do first is make this a finished edge so I'm going to go over to my sewing machine that way it's done. I can set it aside and I'm going to just fold over that edge and stitch it down. I'll do it on both sides. So let's go to the sewing machine. Now I'm just using a regular sewing machine. It is set up with a zigzag stitch. I've got it set for 2.5 by 2.5 in the stitch width and length. I've got black thread. Again, I've got it set for a zigzag stitch. So I'll just sew down this edge. So I'm just going to fold it over. I've kind of finger press it. I've got a standard needle. In fact, I don't even change needles when I'm going from my fabric to my junk journal unless I am planning to sew something really, really fancy and lightweight. All right, so let's go back to the desk and kind of plan some things. All right, so I know that I want to have this fabric on the inside and then this pocket will go in here so I just need to plan out how I'm going to put it together so I want this flap to come down but I only want it to come so far so I'm thinking that will be a good height for the inside so I'm just going to finger press this so I know where the middle is and I'm going to take this piece all right so this piece is going to go right here I'm going to temporarily pin this together that way I have it ready to go all right so I'm gonna set this aside for a moment now I'm going to take my outer fabric and I'm just moving it up to where I think I want it to be so I'm finger pressing it and then I want this flap to only be as tall basically as the fabric allows so I'm going to always check with my journal so I'm okay that there's extra space up here because when I put the gussets in here this will actually kind of push out this way so I'll have enough space at the top so looking at this I want to put fabric that will attach here 
and kind of come over and go over here. So I'm going to double this. So let's do that. But you know what? I have about the same length here. So what I'm going to do now is I've got this ribbon that I found in my stash. Just cut off this edge. And I think what I want to do is I want to attach these together. So I'm going to sew this black ribbon down the middle of this cotton. And this is from my dyeing tutorial. I showed you how to dye paper and fabric. This is some of that fabric. So let's go over to the sewing machine again. I think I'm just going to do a zigzag stitch and stitch this down on both sides. So I'll just cut off the excess here and then I'm going to start sewing again down the other side. If you flip it and you try to sew up the other side, it will make everything twist. So it's better if you just come all the way back up here to the top and then go back down the other side. All right, we've got that stitched together. Now that I have this stitched together, I'm going to find the center between the two and then cut it in half. And now when I look at this, I want to fold under this edge just a little bit. And if I'm smart, I would measure, but that takes like forethought. All right, so I need my longer ruler. So if I fold this over, I'm not thinking right about there. So what I'm going to do is take my pin and pin this in place. Smooth it back out. So I will stitch this area and I don't want it to stitch any higher than this high. So I'm just going to put a pin across there. All right, I'm liking this so far. So I'm going to come over here and take this piece and you want to make sure that you basically keep it flat. So it'll turn just a little bit at the top. Then I'll fold this over and I'm going to come in five inches from the edge. One, two, three, four, five. And right about there. I think that'll be a good height. I know y'all can't see how long that is, but I think I like that. Okay, so now I'm going to open this up pin this into place and that is not at the same height as the other one. <laughs> I thought I had my ruler going straight across, but apparently I did not. My thought was the handle could come down out of the way because it'll bend right here. And then our little flap, if I can get a hold of it, would come down just above that. And then when you pulled your hand up, it would hold this closed. That was my theory anyway. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to measure from the bottom. It's about three inches from the bottom. So if I flip this over carefully, and then fold up this edge. I'm going to use my ruler again and we're going to place it three inches, one, two, three. Okay. And then we're going to come one, two, three, four, five inches in and I can feel through the fabric where it is on the other side. So I'm going to pin that into place. This is how you construct things without a pattern. You just kind of wing it. <laughs> okay, getting it lined back up again. Take this piece, hold it under. One, two, three, four, five. Make sure one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. All right, so now what I'm going to do is go to the sewing machine and sew this area down on both sides and then it should start to kind of give this the idea of where our journal is going to cut our car our journal bag is coming together so it, even though you can't see it even though you can't see it 
I've basically just sewn a little box there in the corner. So that should hold it on there. I'm going to repeat that on the other sides. All right, I've got those sewn on. Okay, so I'm, I've got the handles sewn on, and this is going to be where my flap is, and I think I want to sew it on after I put the two pieces together. So what I'm going to do is I want to match this up. This is the inside. I want to match this up, and I don't want to accidentally catch my handle, so I'll just put a few pins in here and we'll pin this rectangle on the outside edge. I'm going to leave an opening up here where I don't sew. So I'm just putting my pins where I know to start and stop. All right, so I've just pinned around my rectangle. And what I'll do is I'll start sewing here and go all the way around. And then I will turn this right side out. I'm going to do a I'm going to do a straight stitch all the way around this outside edge. So I don't want quite a, about a about quarter of an inch is what I want for my seam allowance. All right, let's go back and remove all the pins and turn it right side out. Oh, before I do that, I'm going to cut these corners just a little bit. And I'll spend a minute kind of fiddling with it, getting that seam turned to the correct side and get it smooth. All right, so in theory, if I did this right, I should be able to fold this up. This should go like that. And then I have this little handle. It's kind of curly at the moment, but I have this handle here that I'll be able to use to carry my bag. All right, so now what I need to do is I need to close this up and I want to stitch this. So I think I'm going to turn it right side out, wrong side out, line this up. So here's what I'm gonna to do is I am going to stitch across here and across here. I'll also attach my little fancy piece. So I may do this both at the same time, just kind of lining that up with the edge. All right, so I'm going to stitch this piece down and then I'll stitch across the out top edge here so that closes my top and bottom and then we will sew or down the sides. Okay so I've attached this piece up here. I've sewn here so that when we fold this up this flips over, okay? It's nice and contained. And I think what I'm going to do now is stitch down these edges. And I know I want to make a little gusset in here. I'm trying to decide, do I want to stitch it from the inside or the outside? I think I'm going to flip it and stitch that on the inside. So then that'll open up and this will kind of have a flip over. Okay. Sometimes I have to just talk that things through on my, for myself. All right. So I'm just going to stitch down here and stitch down here on these two outside edges. All right. Our little bag is starting to come together now. So I may not have got it perfect, but you know what? I'm okay with that. So I want it to have kind of a little gusset and it's just a technique I learned a long time ago which was to just cut out about an inch on the side here and then that causes it when you sew it to work better. Anyhow, I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to come in here about an inch 
In fact, I probably should mark it so I can see that I'm doing it about an inch. All right, so I'm just gonna cut this piece, cut through all those thicknesses, it's kind of heavy. All right, so now I'm gonna take this piece and just mimic on the other side. And now what I do is I take this and fold it flat and I'm going to stitch right across this edge on both sides. All right, here comes the truth of moment of truth. <laughs> so I can trim off these threads if I want. And the reason why I sewed it the way that I did on this part is that way you don't have as many raw seams. So there is the bag. And then in theory, this should fit inside as well as my journal this flips over and then i have this little handle that'll help keep it all nice and closed now if i want i could put a closure on here and i might i don't know i'm just going to kind of play with it the way that it is now i think that's going to work just fine and it's a cute little bag that i put together i hope you like seeing just kind of winging it making a little tote bag to put a journal in i'm going on a trip a vacation cruise and i wanted to be able to just grab this little tote to go sit down and journal for a few minutes i hope you like this thanks so much for watching please give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends comment below if you have any comments or questions and of course Thank you so much for watching. I go live on Mondays at 3.45 p.m. Central Standard Time. And then the first Thursday of the month is my Mixed Media Day at 12.30 on Thursdays. All right, everybody. Y'all have a fabulous day. Bye.